What's up everyone and welcome to Point Blank. I'm Riley and I'm here to talk all things entertainment with my new co-host for the year. Hey guys, I'm Corinna. So we're gonna kick things off starting with Dancing with the Stars. Have you been watching it? I have been. Um, I was kind of disappointed because it didn't come on yesterday. I know, I know. It's because of the football and football overruns. But what, what were your thoughts of week one? I thought it was definitely very dynamic. Um, so all the co-hosts were definitely not what I expected. Like mm -hmm. Carol Baskin, Sky Jackson, mm -hmm. um, Nev from Catfish. Catfish. Yeah. That was just different. I know. There was a bunch of people that I didn't know, but a bunch mm -hmm. that like kind of stood out. I know Cheer has been a big thing on Netflix, so the coach is on it. Um, Caitlin Bristow from The Bachelorette. Mm -hmm. A bunch of like different random people. Exactly. What, did you have like a favorite of the night who you thought was the best? I honestly thought Sky Jackson was mm -hmm. pretty good. And like she said during the episode, She's pretty young, so She's she definitely has young. an advantage mm -hmm. over everyone else. I think so. It was mm -hmm. weird seeing like the size difference between her and her pro. Mm -hmm. Like when she went down into the split, I don't know, it was cool, but yeah. it was just like... It's just like, whoop. Ex yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked Caitlin Bristow. Mm -hmm. that I thought was a good her, one. her dance was good. Justina Machado, I think, I forgot what she's from, but hers was surprisingly mm -hmm. really good. Yeah, I also think like the athletes, the football players mm -hmm. and the basketball players, they, they did pretty good. Mm -hmm. What did you think of Carol Baskin? <laughs> I thought she was a hot mess, but I mean, she might get better, you know, practice. Yeah, yeah. I thought she was a hot mess too. I think it's super entertaining, mm -hmm. so I don't really want to see her go. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be like a fun thing to watch exactly. throughout the season. But I know this episode that's airing tonight she supposedly like opens up about the whole Tiger King situation and her thoughts on it and how she's like kind of kept quiet. So I'm interested to see where that goes. I'm unpopular opinion. I don't think she killed her husband. I, I, I don't even follow up with her like Twitter trending. I was like, okay, cool. And I think we all knew who she was by what she wore last week. And yeah, I was like, okay. Literally. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess we'll see how that plays out with yeah. how she opens up tonight. Because exactly. she said she says things that she's never said before. But like, did you see that her husband's family like made yeah. ads like, what? for the show? Like, like saying what's like, up oh, with that? Come I know. On. I don't know. It's interesting. But do you have a, a winner pick? I'm going to stick with Sky Jackson. You are? Mm -hmm. Nice. I think I'm going to stick with Caitlyn too. Okay. I think Sky and Caitlyn are kind of up there for mm -hmm. me. There's a few other people like AJ McLean from, I think the Backstreet Boys was it? Yeah. He's pretty good. So yeah. I feel like a lot of people have some potential, mm -hmm. but I don't know, I'm excited to see where it goes. Exactly, and it's definitely different considering that they don't have a live audience because of COVID. Mm -hmm. It can get a little annoying, like the judges are in there, the dancers are there, Tyra's the host. Yeah, what do you like, think of that? What do you think of Tyra? I think she's, I mean, you know, America's Got Talent, then she did um, you know, America's Next Top Model. Mm -hmm. So I think she definitely has some experience, but. I guess practice makes perfect. Um, right. She just needs to like warm up, I guess, it's, a little bit more. It's a different more. vibe than exactly. what she's used to. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's kind of like a hit or miss with what the judges have to say. Like it's, mm -hmm. Dance with the Stars is completely different from any other show. Exactly. But I think she'll get used to it. She's, she's good at everything she does. I so, agree. Yeah. So did you watch the Emmys? What did you think of that? It was definitely different due to COVID and how they had like virtual, I yeah. guess, and nominees and you could yeah. see what celebrities were like back home like a virtual red carpet mm -hmm. too that, mm -hmm. that was just different because some people were just full full-on cute clothes or whatever and some yeah. people were just casual so I, I thought know. that was a different dynamic I didn't I didn't like that that some people dress mm -hmm. casual I think like I get that it's virtual but it's the Emmys like yeah. I feel like what else do you have to do at home just exactly. dress up like if you're attending the Emmys if you're nominated you know like you mm -hmm. might as well dress up. Yeah, I thought that was definitely different. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of agree with you. Like, yeah, dress up. Yeah. You're so, being nominated. Exactly. So Zendaya, she broke the record. She made history. She's the youngest female to ever win for Outstanding Actress in a Lead Drama Series. I love Zendaya. I don't know about you, but I think she's super talented. Everything she does is just so entertaining. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I totally agree with you. Zendaya, I think I grew up watching her, you know, shake mm -hmm. it up. Shake it and up. then. Yeah. Um, kind of, she kind of went quiet for a little bit, did Spider-Man, mm -hmm. and then now she's doing Euphoria. So I, know. I thought that I haven't was... seen Euphoria yet. I really want to yeah. watch it. It's pretty good. I definitely Is recommend it. it. I'm, I really want to watch it. All my friends tell me to watch it, mm -hmm. but she's, she's someone who like everyone coming from Disney has like, like Bella Thorne, she kind of hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. Miley Cyrus had some stuff exactly. happen to her, but she's kind of been she's consistent still up there. Yeah. and she like, I don't know. Good for her. Yeah, I'm so proud of her. I know. And then Schitt's Creek and Succession also 
you know, pulled in a lot of wins from their categories. Mm -hmm. I've never seen either of the shows. Neither have I. But yeah. So our last thing, TikTok. What's going on with that? Okay. So I heard it was being banned. Apparently September 20th was the last day that Americans could update it. So okay. apparently it's still going. Um, either Walmart's planning to buy it. I don't even know. Like either Walmart's going to buy it, Microsoft's going to buy it. It's kind of, we're still it's unsure. confusing. I mean, I feel like every day it's like, okay, TikTok's going to get banned exactly. and it never gets banned. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know how that's going to happen. But Microsoft, I think, backed out of their deal. Why yeah. would Walmart buy TikTok? Like, what do they have any Walmart. relations to TikTok see, with? See, I don't know. Like, I only go to Walmart when I'm, you know, getting crazy funky shirts. Mm -hmm. I didn't associate that with TikTok. Maybe TikTok trends have brought more people to <laughs> yeah, Walmart. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's that's their way to get some, get some people in there. But that's all we have tonight for entertainment. We're going to throw it off to Student Spotlight with Reese and a very special guest. Hello and welcome. I'm Reese Allen bringing you the Student of the Spotlight segment on Point Blank. This week we have with us Student Body President Sam Carr. It's good to have you, Sam. So Thanks how are you me. doing? Doing well. How are awesome. you? Awesome. I'm doing well, um, too. It's really awesome that you took time out of this week to, you know, come on the show and talk with us. I know this SGA has been really active this year, especially given all the COVID regulations and whatnot. You guys have done a great job speaking up for students. Um, is there anything that you think students should really keep in mind, you know, being back here? Um, I would definitely say to, first of all, thank your professors. Um, thank all of your uh, faculty, the staff, um, even our administrators. When you pass them by on the promenade in the CAF or in class, thank them for keeping campus safe for us. Um, I would also say to um, be vigilant of where you are, your surroundings, um, stay away from large gatherings and follow those policies and guidelines that the university has set in place for us. Right. I totally agree. I mean, I know we really are fortunate to be back here as so many schools, you know, have come back and then have already gone back online. So the fact that we're still here almost six weeks, six weeks, mm -hmm. is it? I think yep. um, it's just really, you know, amazing. Very and fortunate. I'm really, you know, glad that we are here and able to do that. So it's Agreed. really awesome. Um, and then on top of that, you know, what overall is SGA's like goal for this, you know, year? What's something that you guys really want to, you know, get across? Um, I would say definitely uh, one of our big goals is to kind of rebrand SGA a little bit. Um, over the years, I remember when I started in SGA as a freshman, um, it was oftentimes seen as the piggy bank where you go for money. Um, hmm. And that was kind of it. Um, so our goal this year has been to increase representation across campus from our housing communities, from our athletics um, in different areas around campus, whereas it was normally just clubs and organizations. Uh, we actually just added um, colleges as well. So for instance, Nino Cobain School of Communication, the School of Education. So each school has a representative and we're hoping to add a representative from each housing community to hopefully increase that representation um, from our student body better rather than just being that place where students can come for ask and ask for money, but also to be that place where students can have their voice heard in a better place. Um, so I would say our big overall goal is to kind of move it away from this piggy bank and more into a place of representation. That's really awesome. See, I didn't even know most of that stuff, um, but you guys have been really active, you know, as a, you know, student government. So um, great job so far. I can't wait to, you know, see what else you guys have Thank going you. on. Um, other than that, I know you're super involved here on campus. I think you were just named one of the extraordinary leaders, so congratulations on that. But how do you manage being student body president involved in so many other things and being a full-time student? What's, you know, some advice you could give to somebody who might want to do this in the future? Um, I would definitely say know your limits. So if you think you can do it, then do it. Um, and obviously take time for yourself. Um, Every weekend, I try to honor all of my weekends, unless, of course, I actually have something I need to do on that weekend. So I definitely try to um, take the weekend off. Oftentimes, I'll uh, put my email on automatic reply, mm -hmm. so that way I can have some time for myself. Um, but you know, it is tough sometimes when you go immediately waking up early to go to a meeting or right to class, and then right after class is over, you grab a bite to eat and then head to another meeting or right. send out a ton of emails um, and then off to class again and then finishing up the day <laughs> with meetings. You know, 
for the life of a student body president, um, not just me, but in yeah. years prior, usually starts early in the morning and sure. ends uh, <laughs> late at night. Right. So How else are you going to do everything that you exactly, you know you're doing? exactly? But sure. I love it, um, and you know I wouldn't want to do anything else. Um, yeah. It's what I wanted to do since I was a freshman here. That's great. Um, and to hear the students' concerns and you know be able to be their voice. It is difficult because. Obviously, not all the time you'll be able to please every student. Um, no, but, but of course you try your best. But <laughs> you know, being involved is difficult sometimes. Mm -hmm. But there are ways that you can manage it. So yeah. taking that time for yourself, being with your friends, um, if you have a significant other, being with that significant other, not forgetting about your friends. Sure. Um, so ensuring that you're making time for everyone and not just 100% all the time. SGA or whatever else it is that <laughs> right. you may be involved or in. Or one thing or the other. It's exactly. all about that work-life balance, as they say. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for this week, but we're going to pass it off to Alyssa and Rachel in fashion. Hello, and welcome to the Point Black Blank Fashion segment. My name is Rachel Diodato. My name is Alyssa Hefner. Today we are going to talk about some of our favorite looks from the 2020 Emmys Awards show that aired this past Sunday the 20th. First of all, Zendaya was the youngest to win Best Lead Actress in Drama Series. She wore two dresses. Her first dress was the Christopher John Rogers dress, which she paired with Bulgari jewels and Louboutin heels, which I thought was really beautiful. Yes. What did you think of it? I loved that dress. I think both of her looks were very Zendaya, like they were very mm -hmm. out there. I Loved them both. Yes. Um, the first dress with the contrast between the violet and the black, I think it really paired well. Definitely. And um, the jewels were purple as well. And on her second dress. Yes, her second dress was a Georgia Armani gown with Bugatti earrings as well with purple polka dots. Like, how do we feel about that? I'm usually not a fan of polka dots. Yeah. Um, I, like, a lot of little kids wear it and stuff. I've never seen it worn as in, like, an award show dress or anything yeah. like that. But she's always breaking barriers with fashion <laughs> all the time. So I, I think personally it's loved it. But my question now is purple in. Is Zendaya going to make purple in? That's my next. That is very true. That's the uh, next thing to look out for. Definitely. Um, Reese Witherspoon, too. She had um, a very black, minimalist, simple dress. Um, I believe it was Louis Vuitton as well. Yeah. Um, she also paired it with Louis Vuitton earrings. So the whole look was great. And she had the very simple makeup and then the red lipstick really popped. I loved it. I was looking at it earlier with the little bows on mm -hmm. the sleeves. Like I think it just really made the dress. It was simple. Um, I know some people weren't a fan of it because it is an award show. You kind of need to dress up, but I thought it was simple for this type of an award show. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about the bows on the shoulders. I feel <laughs> like it definitely has, you have to have that like dainty kind of body to do it. Yes. And she does have that, of I was course. Gonna say, she pulled it off very well. She did. So which one was your favorite? Um, it would definitely have to be one of the Zendaya dresses still. It was probably mm -hmm. the Georgia Armani. I loved the bling on it. It mm -hmm. was just, yeah, I'm a bling girl. Yeah, it's very Zendaya. And I also think it kind of like represents what she wore, won the award, the award for. Yes. Because um, Euphoria, you think glitter and bling. Just and all out there. She, yeah, yeah, she and definitely. And she really put that together with her outfits as well. Yeah. Um, with, what did you think of like the more simple outfits, like the people who decided to um, not dress up? I was still just kind of a fan of it because it was virtual, like simple, mm -hmm. cozy. Um, I don't know if we like mentioned this either, but Reese Witherspoon wore pink slippers with her Louis Vuitton dress. Oh like my gosh, it was very yeah. home uh -huh. like vibes. I feel like that, like each style fit the artist mm -hmm. very well. That is very true. And um, Jennifer Addison also wore a plain, simple, simple dress. black dress, yes. which is, it was Louis Vuitton too. <laughs> so that was really funny, I believe. But um, yeah, I think, but I do prefer for them to dress up. I feel like if you're winning such like an award that like is so honorable, especially in their career, um, to have to like dress up and put some makeup on, you know, like, <laughs> yes. I don't know. Um, but yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately that's all we have time for today. So thank you for joining us, and we will um, be right back with the coronavirus update live with Grant and Liv after the break. Like I'm running and I'm feeling like I gotta get away, get away, get away. Better know that I don't and I won't ever stop because you know I gotta win every day, day. Go. She didn't really, really wanna pop me. Go. Just know that you will never pop me. Oh. And I know that I gotta be a little cocky. No. You ain't never gonna stop me. Every time I come in and I gotta set it, then I gotta go and then I gotta get it, then I gotta flow and then I gotta shut it. Any little thing and then I think that he be doing because it doesn't matter because I'm gonna did it, did it. Doritos Blaze, a bold new flavor that brings the heat. Quiet! Shh. Hush.
wash your mouth. I told your mother, y'all can't stop me now. Listen to me now. I'm lasting 20 rounds. And if you want me, then come on, get me now. Is you with me now? Then big it, big it, bounce. I know you think the way I switch, switch my style. Hello, hello. New Mountain Dew Ice. A clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. Doritos Blaze, a bold new flavor that brings the heat. Quiet! Hush your mouth. I told your mother, y'all can't stop me now. Listen to me now. I'm lasting 20 rounds. And if you want me, then come on, get me now. Is you with me now? Then big it, big it, bounce. I know you think the way I switch, switch my style. Hold on, hold on. A clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. And welcome back to Point Blank, and welcome to this week's coronavirus update, where we're here to give you the updates on all aspects of the pandemic, Point Blank. Yes, Grant, and things are looking really great right now for the campus. Uh, cases are starting to go down, and club activities are starting to get back into operating in like person and. Uh, going pretty well and we're being pretty cautious. Yeah, definitely. Some exciting news, though, is that, um, as always, we'll start with the numbers of today. So right here in the U.S., we have around 6.8 million cases, uh, resulting in about 200,000 deaths. More locally here in North Carolina, we have about 195,000 cases, resulting in about uh, 3.2,000 deaths. And right here on HBU's campus, active cases have dropped from 163 to just 129 since our last episode a week ago, which is amazing. Wow, <laughs> oh my gosh. So before we get into discussion of what we wanna say about the how proud we are of HPU community for this awesome, uh, we're doing so great. Uh, I just wanna say, uh, we want to see those numbers continue to go down, so we want to please continue to be a healthy hero and be a, a good hand washer, warrior, whatever illiterate figure you'd like to call yourself so we can kick corona in the curtain. So, yeah, the first thing I'd like to talk about is SGA's plan. They just revealed that uh, clubs and activities will start to meet in person again, obviously very cautiously, uh, with masks and social distancing, of course. Um, as of as of now, you still have to meet virtually, but um, we hope to get the ball rolling on clubs starting to meet in person again, um, because as I said before, those cases are starting to go down, which is amazing. Um, and so I think the reason that cases are going down is because um, in our in the UCAB the other day, which is the University Community Affairs Board, mm -hmm. on our meeting two weeks ago, um, the administration was saying that you know, once we came back to campus, they kind of expected cases to go up because yeah. we have students from 36 countries and uh, all 50 states in the U.S. So it was kind of a gimme that uh, cases were going to go up as soon as, as soon as students came back on campus. So, um, you know, we kind of expected a spike and then a drop. Definitely. Um, and Gail Tuttle, our Senior Vice President of Student Life, uh, two weeks ago, a lot of students asked that, you know, why weren't we tested? unlike most other colleges on mm -hmm. campus, uh, on their campuses. Um, and she said she didn't want to create like a false psychology among um, our students. You know, if, you, if, you're, if a lot of students tests came back positive, or sorry, negative, then they would think, oh, you know, I'm clear to go out, party, do whatever, because I can't spread it, and um, m most likely people can't spread it to me. Um, so that was her reasoning behind that, um, just because it would create Full psychology. Yeah, way to go, Gail. I mean, you know, you don't want to worry about those uh, like fake positives as well. You don't want to scare people about that as well. Um, but we did notice that the sorority recruitment had a time fluctuation when it came to uh, interviews and bid day. Uh, we noticed uh, there's some sororities who were caught outside of their houses trying to take pictures without masks on. But Pan uh, Hanlick uh, decided that they were going to resume it uh, on schedule. 
uh, HBU continued to uh, stay on the deadline. And to decrease the spread, we decided to uh, keep all interviews online. So that's really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are so proud of all of our, the whole HBU community um, for what they've done to try to combat this virus and uh, for those numbers starting to go down. And that is all we have this week for the Point Blake Coronavirus Update. And please remember to keep washing your hands, keep not touching your face, and um, seriously, we are so proud of you guys. Keep up the good work because we can only beat this if we work together. Ah, yes. Like my mother says, don't touch your face. Now here is Danny and Ethan with sports. Let's see, let's see that. What's going on, everybody, and welcome into your Point Blank Sports Update. My name is Danny Shea. That's Ethan Smith. And Ethan, let's just jump right into it. We have week two of the NFL. What do you got for us? So when you take a look at how teams often use rookie quarterbacks, it's often sparingly, maybe throw the ball a couple times, mainly try to do with the running game. But Joe Burrow, let me tell you, second start in the NFL, he had 61 pass attempts. That is the second most ever for a rookie quarterback. Also had three touchdowns, but the Bengals unfortunately lost a throw to the Browns 35-30. to I mean, he looked phenomenal despite the loss again. I said that last week. I'm going to say it again this week. Three touchdowns in your second game in the NFL. I mean, mm -hmm. 61 pass attempts. He's putting trust into the coaching staff. The coaching staff is putting trust into him. You can see it every week so far. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you take a look at just what he's been able to do. He's put the franchise on his back. Unfortunately, some of his other teammates haven't been able to have uh, similar success. But, um, you know, I guess we'll just see uh, how things play out for the Bengals this season. Exactly. S speaking of a team who hasn't had a ton of success, the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> it was an embarrassing <laughs> loss. They were the first team in NFL history to have 39 points and zero team turnovers, and they lost the game 40 to 39 against the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, that was a straight choke job. Oh my that gosh. That was unbelievable. Do you expect any less from the Atlanta Falcons, though? We've, after seen, the it Super Bowl? We've seen it once. I mean, oh, yeah. it didn't shock me that it's, they did it again. The stat that really just blew my mind is that teams up until Sunday were 440 and 0 when they put up 39 points and didn't have a turnover since turnovers became a stat in 1933. So since 1933, not a single team has lost if they put up those kinds of numbers, and the Atlanta Falcons managed to do it. I mean, watching the game, when you saw Greg Zerlin come out for that long field goal, I mean, people were questioning, is he going to hit it, is he not going to mm -hmm. hit it? But he was playing the Falcons. Yeah. You knew he was going to hit you it just for the meme. All right, so uh, heading over to the West Coast, or rather the East Coast, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. Brutal. They, they won the game 31-13 to 13 against the Jets, but they had huge injuries all over the field. Jimmy G went down. Nick Bosa went down with what they think is a torn ACL. Solomon Thomas. You have guys going down all over the field. And it's really unfortunate because the 49ers coming off of an NFC championship last year, uh, it's just really unfortunate to see all those guys go down. I mean, not only, it's obviously brutal for the 49ers to lose all those guys, especially guys like Nick Bosa, J uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, but it's even more embarrassing in my head for the Jets, the fact that they lost to a right. team that lost four of their, not, not only starters, key starters, because mm -hmm. you, you have star players, like I said, Jimmy G, Nick Bosa, big guys for this franchise that go down and it, the Jets still lose. Right. It's un unbelievable. A team that did not lose this past week was the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, held on, uh, held on to a late game, um, to a late game lead. Ended up winning 26 to 21. Uh, ben threw for 311 yards and two TDs. He is looking very nice after missing out on a year due to injury. I said it last week. They looked good on Monday night. They looked really good again this weekend against the Denver Broncos. Like you said, Big Ben playing another great game. I think the entire offense just is clicking on all cylinders. Oh, right yeah. Now. You take a look at a guy like Chase Claypool. He was a rookie coming out of Notre Dame this past year. Had an 84-yard touchdown scamper to put the Steelers ahead. So, I mean, you take a look. You have guys all over the field stepping up. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how this young offense uh, is able to take the league by storm if they can with uh, this quarterback who has already proven to be a legend in the NFL. Absolutely. A quarterback who has not proven to be a legend in the NFL, Carson Wentz. Unfortunately, they took an L 37-19 against the LA Rams. But what stood out to me, <laughs> there are no fans in a lot of the NFL stadiums. Somehow, he managed to get booed by the automated crowd, no crowd noise. That's brutal. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. I mean, you take a look at just... 
a team, I mean, and just to think, a couple years ago, we were talking about Carson Wentz being an MVP candidate. And now all of a sudden, you look at just the team officials themselves who are running the booth up, managing the crowd noise, they're pumping in booze. That just shows you the kind of faith that the Eagles have in Carson Wentz at this point. So could we see a quarterback change in Philadelphia? I mean, if he's still there at this point, considering everything he's gone through, mm -hmm. how do you not ride with him at this point? I mean, he's obviously, he obviously has that potential to be a franchise quarterback. We've seen it before. But a guy who we didn't know could be a possible franchise quarterback that is looking like one so far, Cam Newton. Oh, yeah. Even though they lost to the C Seattle Seahawks on Sunday night, he looked phenomenal once again. Mm -hmm. he, set an, he set a record. He is now the only quarterback with eight multi-rushing touchdown games. Uh, he ended up passing some legends such like uh, Steve Young, Steve McNair, Otto Graham. Uh, he's putting his name up there with the legends and he is playing with just, he is just playing super aggressive and he's playing with just, it's almost like he's angry at all the other NFL teams who passed up on him the off season. Yeah, I mean, a guy that looked great, though, again, Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. him, and, him and the offense, that Seattle offense, absolutely balled out in another game. But I think the play of the game is that goal line stand, the final play of the game that stopped Cam Newton from getting into the end zone. Uh, it's very unfortunate to see. I mean, you have a guy like Cam Newton who already has such a strong reputation as a dual-threat quarterback. You can't call such a predictable play on the one-yard line trying to win the game. I mean, I see what they were trying to do. And, I mean, it worked for the Panthers in the past a couple times. But, I mean, unfortunately, it just did not work. Seattle knew exactly where they were going, and they were able to stuff them. Exactly. Well, there is a championship going on right now. The Stanley Cup Final is underway. The Tampa Bay Lightning and the Dallas Stars. The Stars take game one, 4-1. to one. Anton Hudobin, again, another big game from him, making 35 saves on 36 shots, including 22 of those in the third period. I mean, Anton Hudobin is mm -hmm. unbelievable again for the Dallas oh, yeah. Stars. I mean, after going down with an injury in the last, in the last series, I mean, he has been stepping up. Um, absolutely. I mean, you take a look at just guys coming off an of injury. You have no idea how they're going to react. But, I mean, in game one, at least, they were able to look good. But, I mean, game two was unfortunately a different story. The Lightning ended up taking that game three to two. Uh, they had three goals in the first period. Two of them came on the power play. Um, they are still... Um, looking to try and make this series competitive. I mean, they look like the Tampa Bay Lightning they need to be if they want any shot at winning the Stanley Cup Final. Two of those goals coming, in the uh, coming on the power play, like you mentioned, in that first period, uh, being from Braden Point and Kevin Shattenkirk. Mm -hmm. But the Stars making a late push in the second and third, not able to get it done. Game three of the Stanley Cup Final is Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Speaking of championships, we are very close to one in the NBA. We have the Eastern and Western Conference Finals going on right now. Uh, game one in the East, Miami, game one, games one and two in the East, Miami we were able to take. Uh, Jimmy Butler had a three-point play in game one. That put Miami ahead for good, and Bam Adebayo finished with a stunning rejection of Jason Tatum to end up holding on to the lead. Um, game two was a similar story. I mean, it was a close one. Uh, it looked like Boston was about to take it. Uh, they had a 20-point lead going into the game, but, I mean, uh, Miami ended up storming back. Um, very emotional reaction coming yes. from the Celtics locker room. They've, some people were saying that Marcus Smart was seen storming out of the Boston locker room, screaming at the top of his lungs, as were the rest of his teammates. Um, game three, though, it looked like they had things together. Yeah, I mean, Boston finally showed their potential. They come out of this one on top, 117-106. Uh, they played with that sense of urgency. You, haven't, you didn't see that in game two for them, really. Uh, Boston coming out quick, uh, out to a 20-point lead. Uh, but Miami coming in tough in the fourth quarter. Boston was able to withstand that. And game four of this series, uh, Miami up 2-1, to one will be at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. In the West, you have games one and two both going to the Lakers. Uh, game one, Anthony Davis had a double-double, 37 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, LeBron also had 15 points and 12 assists after finishing a distant second in the MVP voting. Uh, but they were able to take roll to a 126-114 victory in game one. Uh, game two, though, a lot closer than a lot of people thought it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, the Denver Nuggets, not only did they take down a great team before this, nobody in the L.A. Clippers, nobody's thinking that they're going to come in and beat the Lakers. But they looked good game mm -hmm. two despite the 105-103 uh, loss. But let's just talk about it, the story. Anthony Davis, buzzer oh, yeah. beater. You, and you saw right after it, uh, he yelled Kobe after oh, that gosh. shot. And it was, it was all over the uh, headlines. But that's all the time for us this week at your Point Blank Sports Update. My name is Danny Shea. That's yeah. Ethan Smith. Don't forget to tune into the show next week, and we'll see you guys then.